In this episode, you'll learn how to create card holders and issue virtual or physical cards. Virtual cards can be used instantly right after creation, and physical cards are actually sent to your card holders by mail. A card holder represents an individual or a business entity that can be issued cards. So to get started, we're gonna create a card holder with a name and some billing information and whether they're an individual or company. For the demo today, we're gonna to start from the developer office hours template. We're gonna install that with the Stripe for VS Code extension. So if you're curious about how to get started from scratch, watch that getting started with Express episode on the Stripe developers YouTube channel. We'll jump into the terminal to install some dependencies and start the server. All right, let's update this index page and add a form for creating card holders. Now, in practice, you might create card holders that are related directly to your authenticated users or you might automatically create a card holder for a connected account as soon as it's set up with Stripe Connect. In this case, we're gonna create a simple form that's gonna send post requests to slash create card holder, passing back the name, email, phone number, and the billing address for the card holder. So now when we refresh the page, we see a form for collecting details to create the card holder. That's gonna send a post request to our server's create card holder endpoint. That doesn't exist yet, so let's go add a route now. In order to accept form encoded data on the server, we're gonna tell Express to use that URL encoded middleware, and we'll add a new route for handling post requests to the create card holder path. We're gonna extract the request params from the body. Then we're gonna make an API call to Stripe using the Stripe node client library. Note that this expansion was available from the Stripe for VS Code extension. So this API call is gonna create a new card holder, and it, there's a chance this call could fail. So we wanna wrap it in a try catch block. And for now, if the request fails, we'll simply respond with JSON, including the failure message. Otherwise, we're gonna redirect to that new card.html page where we can collect details for issuing the new card. So it is a best practice to store the ID of your issuing card holders in the database. This is a great point to do so. To keep the demo simple, we don't actually use a database, but instead we're gonna pass around IDs using query string params, but this is where you would store that ID alongside your authenticated user. Once we have the card holder, we can go into the next step, which is to create the card. So in this case, we're redirecting to a new page where we can collect the details for that issuing card. So we'll submit the form to create a new card holder and we're redirected to that new card view, but that doesn't actually exist yet. We do see the ID of the card holder in the query string params, and we can take a look at that object using the Stripe CLI. So from the terminal, we'll say Stripe get and pass in the ID of the new card holder, and that will retrieve the JSON for the card holder, and we can take a look at that data. Let's add that new card form and work on issuing cards for these card holders. We'll start by copying the card holder form and making a couple tweaks. The route should be create card. In this case, we're gonna pass the ID of the card holder and a currency back to the server. So again, in practice, the ID of the card holder would be stored in the database, but for demonstration, we're gonna pass that around and uh, use the query string params to pass that back to the server. We're gonna use a few lines of JavaScript here to grab the card holder ID from the query string params and pass that into our form. Now, if we were issuing physical cards, we'd also need to collect the shipping address to which the physical card should be sent in the mail. Today, we're gonna to keep it simple and issue a virtual card. Virtual cards enable you to retrieve the card details from the dashboard or the API. We recommend limiting to only retrieving virtual card details from the dashboard or via issuing elements in order to avoid PCI compliance, extra PCI compliance burden. You cannot store these card details on your server without full PCI DSS compliance. It's extremely burdensome. And so we recommend using either the dashboard or issuing elements. All right, so it's time to add an endpoint to the server. So we're gonna to go to that endpoint, and this is gonna be the endpoint that actually issues the card. Again, this is gonna be a post route. We'll extract those request params passed from the client and make an API call to Stripe, passing along the card holder, the currency, and the type for this, this issued card. In this case, the type is set to virtual, but again, if we wanted to pass physical, then we could pass physical as the type and we'd also need to include the shipping address to where we we're gonna send that physical card. This API call could also fail, so we're gonna wrap it in a try catch. And if there's a failure, we're gonna render a JSON message. Otherwise, we're gonna redirect to a success page, again, including the ID of the issued card in the query string params. And also, this is a good place to store that ID in your database. 
uh, somewhere alongside some authenticated user. Now we can submit the form to issue a card. Check out that card's ID in the query string params. We'll use that to refetch the card using the Stripe CLI and inspect the data. Notice attributes like the brand, last four, expiration month, and year. You might also notice some spending controls. We're gonna cover spending controls in another episode, but just know that you can create spending controls to restrict authorizations to certain amounts or types of business expenses. We also notice that the status here is inactive. In order for authorizations to be approved, a card must be active. So let's update the API call here to pass in the status of active to activate the card immediately when it's issued. Alternatively, you could update the card later, setting its status to active. Now we can refresh the page and issue a new active card. We can again confirm by retrieving the card with the Stripe CLI. Finally, we'll add a success page that simply shows the user a message and the ID of the issued card. From the dashboard, we can search for the card by ID and reveal the card number here, and you'll see this card number and the CVC with the reveal button. Note it's also technically possible to retrieve the raw details from the API using expand. Here we'll use a curl request passing in expansion for the card number and the card CVC. And in the API response, we can see those details. If expand is a new concept, consider watching the video about expanding objects. That'll be linked to from the description. So as a quick recap, you learned how to create card holders and how to issue cards. You saw how to issue virtual cards and you know that passing in physical, you would also need to pass the shipping address. You also now know how to use the expand feature of the API to retrieve the sensitive card number and CVC for the issued card but you also know that that's not a best practice and instead you should either use the dashboard or issuing elements to avoid that extra PCI compliance burden. We're so excited to see what you build with Stripe issuing. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time.